Yesterday, we told you of John McAllister, a two-term Republican state senator who represents a district in Omaha, Nebraska, who on Sunday tweeted a long thread calling out the Republican Party as enabling white supremacy in the country. Quote, as a lifelong Republican, it pains me to say this, but it's the truth. I, of course, I'm not suggesting that all Republicans are white supremacists, nor am I saying that the average Republican is even racist. What I am saying, though, is that the Republican Party is complicit to obvious racist and immoral activity inside our party. We have a Republican president who continually stokes racist fears in his base. He calls certain countries s holes, tells women of color to go back where they came from, and lies more than he tells the truth. We have Republican senators and representatives who look the other way and say nothing for fear that it will negatively affect their elections. No more. When the history books are written, I refuse to be someone who said nothing. We all like to cite Abraham Lincoln's Republican lineage when it is politically expedient. But now is the time to act like Lincoln and take a stand. In response, the Nebraska State Republican Party issued a statement telling McAllister to leave the party. Executive Director Ryan Hamilton said McAllister's latest false statement about Republicans should come as no surprise Nothing to false about anyone it, actually. who is paying attention. And we're happy he has finally shed all pretense of being a conservative. Okay, again, this is, this is what is so offensive. This is what stopped just, us yesterday. Just, let's just stop. I, I, I just seriously. Let's He's just kicking stop. him out of the party? Yeah. No, no. I mean, conservative. Again, again, we're, we're talking about there. Uh, we're talking about. A Republican operative uh, who supports a uh, Republican president who is a protectionist, uh, who uh, pumps out massive socialist uh, uh, farm bills, uh, proposes a $16 billion farm bill, uh, has tariff taxes, uh, it does, I mean, the largest national debt ever, uh, massive trillion dollar deficit. Uh, highest deficit in the history of the United States uh, in, in good economic times. I mean, you can go on and on. I mean, uh, bashes NATO, goes after the very alliances that actually helped us beat Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia. I mean, please, I mean, that guy, whoever wrote that, that woman, whoever wrote that, they are not conservatives. No. And they shouldn't throw the word so around. Let's Rep bring in. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Republican State Senator John McAllister of Nebraska joins us now. Um, I guess you've been kicked out of the party, or where do you stand on your political affiliation right now? Well, they can't kick me out of the party. That's something only I can do. Uh, <laughs> so I won't be leaving. Uh, in point of fact, Donald Trump has hijacked the Republican Party in Nebraska as well as the country. And we've lost the traditional values that Republicans have had. Free trade, mm. legal immigration, and of course, fiscal sanity. And uh, I'm afraid we've uh, left our moorings and we need to uh, come back to what the Republican Party uh, was in the past. And so, Senator, what's it like for you, I, I, I asked this question, as a former uh, Republican and a guy that fought for balanced budgets while Donald Trump was writing checks to Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and throwing fundraisers for Chuck Schumer at Mar-a-Lago and giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to the DNC. What's it like to have Republicans all around you following this lifetime Democrat who's always been a big government Democrat and only switched parties uh, in 2011 when he saw that the, the racist birther campaign helped him out? You're absolutely right, Joe. Yeah, Joe, it does, doesn't make any sense to me at all. And uh, I, I fear for the Republican Party and, and America, uh, the direction we seem to be going. But, uh, you know, Republican or Democrat parties can rebuild themselves after an election. Let's just hope that, that occurs in uh, 2020. Have you had any support on the record or off the record from any other Republicans uh, that are elected officials in Nebraska? Uh, not elected officials, but uh, the emails I'm getting from Republicans around the country are extremely favorable. So I'm I'm gratified for that. Are you uh, 
You, have, have you, you not heard anything from Ben Sass, a guy who likes to hold himself <laughs> out as a moral arbiter? <laughs> no, I have not, although he uh, just opened his campaign uh, for 2020. So uh, uh, I'm, I suppose I'll have an opportunity to talk to Ben Sass. Yeah, Willie Geist is in New York and has a question for you, Senator. Good morning, Mr. McAllister. Good. I'm interested to hear in um, how much thought you put into this decision to speak out. We've been surprised over the last couple of years at the complete unwillingness of most Republicans to say even a cross word about Donald Trump for fear of getting primaried or something. I don't know what exactly, but you said something that stood out to me. You said, when the history books are written, I refuse to be someone who said nothing. You knew there was some risk to speaking out. Tell me about your calculation to, to do it. Well, this wasn't planned to go as national as it seemed to have come, uh, but I am anxious for other Republican office holders to, to come to the fore because they've been AWOL for too long and it's time for them to jump into the game and call out bad behavior when it occurs. Uh, it's time for them to uh, uh, stand up and be counted. And what's the risk to you speaking out publicly, sir? The risk to me is minimal. You know, we, we don't have a caucus system in Nebraska, uh, and I term out in three years, so uh, I think, uh, you know, I won't pay a, a, a big political price. So we've, we've known Senator Sass on this show. We've found him to be a very smart and a decent guy. Um, the reason he's not speaking out is pretty simple. He's got a primary opponent in his Senate race who has said explicitly Ben Sass has done nothing in this, for the state of Nebraska except criticize Donald Trump. What would you say if you did have a, the ear of Senator Sass today? Well, I'd tell Ben Sass just to go ahead and, and do what's best for the country instead of worrying about your political future. And that is the problem. Too many Republicans have a fear of being primaried and then they just say nothing. And as I mentioned before, they need to, need to stand up and be counted. Uh, Senator McAllister, uh, thank Rick. you for for speaking out. Um, I, I can tell you, the executive director of the Nebraska Republican Party, he, I'm, I'm, I guarantee you got a call from the RNC or the, or the White House to say they repudiate you right away, and that if they didn't, didn't, he would no longer have a future in the Republican Party because that's the way these people operate. But I wanted to talk to you about more about policy. You mentioned trade. You are an agricultural farm state, and this president is engaged in a trade dispute a war. Uh, which he seems incompetent and incapable of handling. How are the farmers in your state doing? And do you see any backlash coming from agriculture America against uh, Trump's uh, really reckless tariff policies? Well, I absolutely agree. And the actions of the president have been devastating, devastating to Nebraska farmers. Uh, but yet, for the most part, I, I don't hear any active criticism on, on the president. Uh, they seem to be just grin and bear it and, and hope that it gets better. And so far, I haven't seen much evidence of that. Well, we really appreciate your voice. Uh, Nebraska State Senator John McAllister, thank you very much for coming on the show this Th morning. Thank you so much. To meet you. Thank you so much, Senator, for standing up and being counted uh, and sounding like a, actually a member of the party of Lincoln. Yep. <laughs> thank you very much. Coming up. Americans overwhelmingly support stricter gun legislation, and it seems congressional Republicans may be starting to get on board with the idea as well. Democratic Senator Chris Murphy, who has pushed for tougher gun laws for years, joins the conversation next on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.